Hello. Welcome to the Weekly Wind-Up with myself, Emma Kirk. Cancer is a word you'll no doubt have heard. And if you've ever been in the position to be told you have it, it can be very scary and the word can promote fear and quite often confusion. Today I'm joined by David O'Halloran, who's a cancer educator, and he's here to talk to us about how we can reduce our risk and educate ourselves within this minefield of health concerns. Welcome to the show, David. Thank you. So when you look in a, a paper for an advert for a job, you don't really see cancer educator. So how did you become a cancer educator? A little bit bizarre, really. I didn't intend to be. Um, I trained as a radiotherapist. So they're the, the people that work in radiotherapy departments to mm -hmm. uh, treat people who've ca got cancer. Um, but even as a student, I didn't feel I wanted to work clinically for the rest of my life. So mm -hmm. I quickly engineered my career in that sense to get into education as quickly as possible. So I became a senior lecturer in radiotherapy at the University of Leeds, mm -hmm. where I worked for a number of years. But I quickly realised there's actually quite an, off, an awful lot of people who work within cancer services, within the cancer setting generally, who need to know about cancer as a disease but don't necessarily have a background in cancer or even science. Mm -hmm. They're employed because they're a journalist, they're employed because they're a researcher or statistician. Um, so I, I took it on myself then to, to design courses to help these people learn about the disease quickly so they, they can get up and run and, and do their job properly, really, rather than having to uh, rely on searching these terms uh, and trying to understand the terminology themselves. So for the last 15 years, I've been working as a, as a consultant, a, a specialist in cancer education, if you like, mm -hmm. taking my courses and work uh, around the UK. You mentioned that it's a, it's a kind of sciencey education. Is it then primarily people who are working within the NHS or looking after people with cancer, or do you do a bit of both? Both really. Um, I, I, I'm a regular visitor to places like Cancer Research UK yeah. uh, to train their staff. Um, a lot of my clients will be from NHS based cancer services. Mm -hmm. Now that might be people who are directly um, working with patients such as cancer nurses yeah. or it might be people working in clinical trials in that setting mm -hmm. or it might be people who are working with cancer data and cancer information. Mm -hmm. There's a wealth of people out there who work within this field but don't really have a background in it. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not even have a background in science. Yes. So yes. then to understand this complex terminology, yeah. they, they need somebody that can break it down for them, dis demystify it, mm -hmm. uh, and put it across in terms which is suitable mm -hmm. for their level of knowledge, if you like. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And I suppose then if they're passing that on to patients, Correct. it means yeah. they understand yeah. Yeah. and they can deliver that in a, a better format. Ultimately, um, the goal is um, having that knowledge increases one's confidence. Yeah. And when you're talking to patients, uh, we, we have to know what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, the, the, if, if, we're, if, if we're shown as, a, as being a cancer nurse, um, a cancer researcher, somebody who's, who has that in their title, of their job role, there's an expectation, and rightly so, mm -hmm. that they know something about the disease. Mm -hmm. um, e even uh, medical secretaries who receive phone calls from cancer patients yep. um, need to know the rudimentaries of that disease so that they can point the patient in the right direction, really. Yeah. Knowledge is power in that sense. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. If I'm a patient who has cancer and I'm talking to somebody who understands they've been on your course or they mm -hmm. have a background, <coughs> do you think that that takes away slightly their understanding of how I'm feeling or no, do you educate on I that I as well? Hope not. I mean, I, I, we, we always touch on it. You cannot really talk about cancer uh, without touching on that side of yeah. things. But there are, there are many more better educated professionals around cancer psychology and and the psychology of cancer, if you like, who, who will be able to deal with that. And mm -hmm. certainly uh, patients, who, pa cancer nurses, for example, who actually work with patients, yeah. they'll, they'll talk about this a lot. They'll learn about that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, on my courses, we tend to stick more to breaking down the terminology, mm -hmm. the science around it, and, and allowing them people to understand the terminology that they will come across. Mm -hmm. Staging, grading, all these yes, things that people yeah. may or may not have heard of. Yeah. Um, 
just so that they can talk about it in a more knowledgeable way, really, and, and, and allow the patients to understand how important these mm. bits of information are, really. I know one of the things you're passionate about is educating to reduce risk. So tell me mm. about that. How do, you, how do you go about that? Well, first of all, we've got to understand cancer is a progressive disease. It's not, we might be diagnosed with it on Wednesday, but it's something that's been um, uh, generating for, for, for many years sometimes. Mm -hmm. A little bits of damage, however that damage occurs, over a lifetime, really. So we don't tend to start smoking on Monday and we have potentially yeah. a lung cancer on Wednesday. It's, yeah. it's years and years and years for these things to develop. So if we want to reduce risk, and don't forget most patients, not all patients, but most patients who come through our door with cancer will be 60, 70, 80 years of age. If we want to reduce people's risk of developing cancer in those years, yep. we have to get to them in their formative years. Yep. Um, leading healthy lifestyles. We know there's a correlation between smoking and certain types of cancer, mm -hmm. lung cancer being the obvious one, but other mm -hmm. cancers as well. So if we want to reduce our risk of that, we don't smoke, mm -hmm. or we reduce our exposure to smoke, however we do that. We know there's a relationship between uh, alcohol and certain types of cancer. Bladder cancer has been well researched in that relationship, but mm -hmm. we've seen alcohol also being implicated in lots of other types of cancer. So to reduce your risk, limit the consumption of alcohol or be very sensible with it. We know there's a relationship with diet mm -hmm. and certain types of cancer. So promoting good diet uh, is really important. We have a, a bowel screening program uh, that, uh, as well as breast screening and cervical screening, but the bowel screening program is relatively new. Um, and there's only about 50% of people eligible to do the test actually do it. Right. And you ask yourself, why aren't they doing it? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not doing it because they're not educated about the whole process. And part of the process is having to get a sample of your stools. And we don't like doing that. And, we don't, <laughs> and, and this, this is all comes back to education. If yeah. we can educate people about the importance of this, what to look for, how to do it, then doing the test is relatively straightforward. Do you think that, this, that society, though, is that unaware of how to reduce risk? Because, I mean, saying about a healthy diet and the alcohol and the smoking, most people would know that that isn't a good thing, mm. wouldn't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, whether they know enough yeah. is a mute okay. point. Where, whether they, whether the way it is brought across is a mute point. So how do we improve that? How, how would you improve that? How, places like Cancer Research UK are already doing some great stuff. Yeah. They've, they've changed the way that they put information out. They're, they're much stronger now at putting out good infographics. Yes. Clear and concise. Clear, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can see it, what the risks are and what you're looking at. Whereas 10 years ago, it was it's words. It was right, reams yeah. of words. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, the other th message is, um, is, is getting t to kids mm. whilst they're formative and can begin to understand about this stuff. That's the biggest impact I think would mm -hmm. change mm -hmm. risk going forward. Mm -hmm is getting the message out to young children, teenagers, young adults uh, about, ha about taking these good habits yep. forward. We're already seeing that. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a generational thing, I think. People of my generation and older, we never yeah. had that. Yeah. Now there's lots of information out there that can be used. The Teenage Cancer Trust, uh, brilliant at... They, they, they produce packages mm -hmm. that with which they go into schools yep. to talk to teenagers about what is a difficult subject. Some of them will have parents, yep. uh, grandparents, brothers and sisters who have had cancer or mm -hmm. have cancer. So to actually go in and talk to these people about that, you've got to be very mm -hmm. skilled. Yep. Uh, it can't just be anybody. You, you can't rely on the teachers. Our teachers do a really yep. good job. You can't. They don't have the skills yep. to do that job. Yep. Um, so the Teenage Cancer Trust do really well with that, actually. Uh, I, I, I would say to, if there's any schools out there that are, mm -hmm. are thinking of 
introducing this as a topic. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have it as a topic in schools. Mm -hmm. It might be talked about on these special days that they have. But if they were serious about really getting the message across, I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would get get hold of cancer, uh, so teenage cancer trust, and mm -hmm. uh, ask for help and guidance and have a look at the stuff that they're doing. If as an adult though, I want to find out more if I've got a friend yeah. or obviously, yeah. and you know, my father and my family have had cancer. Yeah. Where, yeah. where would you suggest that I go for a accurate information? Yeah, so that's the important word, is because just putting it in Google is not <laughs> the, a good enough thing nowadays no. because you have to be aware of what's on there and there's a lot of good information there's just as much bad information mm -hmm. um, trusted websites that I would use on a regular basis at Cancer Research UK is brilliant they've got lots of really good information the challenge sometimes is finding what you want but for yeah. general cancer information it's actually really well structured mm -hmm. uh, Macmillan again have another good website but they, these, these give you sort of uh, information generally about cancer. If we have, uh, if the person has a specific type of cancer, specific questions on that, there are lots of cancer specific websites mm -hmm. related to that particular tumour site. So things like the Lymphoma Organisation Association have a great website. So people suffering from lymphoma, mm -hmm. that's your first port of call, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, Leukemia.com uh, is another one, mm -hmm. really good website. Um, you've got the Joe's Cervical Trust for cervical cancer, brilliant. Lots of breast cancer ones uh, that you can actually tap into with yeah. all really good relevant stuff. So there, the Cancer Research UK, generally speaking, and Macmillan, places like this will have a links page. Yes, of course. Which will link yeah. through to what they regard as trusted sites. Um, and that's, that's a really good avenue to get mm. to the information that you want, really. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for You're coming welcome. to talk to us today and taking the time out of your schedule. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Thank you. That is all we've got time for, I'm afraid. Um, so if you wish to discuss this or any other topic, you can see KLTV and contact us by the usual means. Thank you for watching. I'm Emma Kirk. Goodbye for now.